Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here, and today I'm taking a look at a two-player game about pulling off the greatest heist of all time. This is Caper Europe. Caper Europe here is a re-implementation, reworking uh, of Caper that came out from Keymaster, same company, uh, now including uh, some new content, but also it's not really the same game. They've kind of reworked some things, streamlined some things. So truly, really it's 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 different enough where I wouldn't say just second edition of the uh, Caper game. The Caper game is a fantastic game. So spoiler alert. I really like that one. We'll talk about what I think of this in a bit, but I really like that game. I think it's a fantastic two-player game. Um, the one I'll be looking at here today is what they're calling the Mastermind Edition. It comes with a, this nice uh, slip case, and it comes with metal coins, and so I'm not sure if there's another edition, what, uh, uh, which of these things wouldn't be part of that, okay? But this is what I've got. This is what I'm going to review with, so just making you aware of that. So if you don't know Caper, that's fine. I'm going to give you an explanation of what's going on in this one. If you do, you'll be able to very quickly spot some differences. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. In the game, you are trying to score the most victory points. And you're going to be scoring those things based on locations, which are these three locations here. If you control them, you're going to be scoring your, uh, your thieves, which are these. You're going to be scoring gear, if it gives you any victory points, as well as things you stole, all these goodies that you've been able to pilfer. To set up the game, you're going to pick one of these four cities to be the city that you are playing in. You'll shuffle the corresponding cards into these two decks here, as well as the cities, before you set them up. So right now, Paris is shuffled in here, okay? And then... You are pretty much ready to begin once you've randomized these uh, into the different locations. So, the game is going to have six rounds, as you see here. And uh, the rounds are going to alternate between thief rounds and gear rounds. So, during the first one, we are going to deal each player four of these thieves. And uh, the arrow denotes that the player sitting over here on this side is going to be the start player. Alright, so, you know, one, two, three... Four. There we go. So, uh, I would start, and I am going to play one of these thieves to one of these heists. Each heist has room for three thieves, and as I play them, I am going to allow... Um, I might play that there, for example. Uh, this is going to give me some coins. In this case, two coins. So I'll take those two and put them in front of me as well as uh, give me or allow me to achieve some sort of special ability. So, as we look at uh, this character here, it says that for every green card, and that's the front of the card, not the back, every green card counts as one of these little, um, I guess, uh, thievery points. I forget what exactly they're called. But basically what that means is I'm going to take this marker here in the center that has that symbol and pull it one space towards me, for every green card I play here. And that could be on this character, or it could be on one of the other thieves at this same heist. All right? So that's what I do. And then the other player is going to go. They're going to pick a card, and they are going to play that somewhere. They can play it anywhere they want to. So perhaps they'll put it at, at this uh, heist. That one says they're going to get one coin right now. It's denoted right here on the side. And also, at the end of the game, they are going to score three victory points for every red card and one card of any other color in this entire heist. So among all the people there, on their side, of course. Once that's done and we've each played a card, then we switch hands. And I play another one now from the cards my opponent just had. So I'll play one, same thing. I'll do, you know, anywhere I want to. I'll do that. I'll take a coin. Uh, and then my opponent will play one. We'll switch again. And the final one... Once we are down to two cards, we play one and discard the other one to the discard pile over here. And then we move on to the next round. So I'll just set those aside for now. The next round says it's a gear type round. And every player gets six of these. And then we uh, alternate turns. Same thing. We each play one, starting now with my opponent. And then we switch hands. And we keep doing that until we're down to... A single card, that last one is just discarded, all right? So what do these do? Well, they're going to have oftentimes uh, costs, 
as you can see here in the top corner, there's a price tag there. You need to be able to pay the amount of coins to put the card out. And they'll do something. Like I said, every character can have up to three of these. So for instance, if my opponent here plays that there, they have to pay one coin to pay for the card. And then that one shows uh, this shape with a question mark in it. That means they can steal any one of those. So perhaps they'll take that. They'll steal that one, okay? Or maybe, maybe they'll think about some combos. Winning this card is going to give you three victory points and another two victory points for every painting you have stolen. So maybe they'll go ahead and steal a painting instead and try to win this location. The way you win the location, having this closer to your side than the opponent, right? It's always, you know, if it's in the center, no one gets it. If it's closer to you, you'll win that location. If it's particularly off center, you'll get a bonus two points or one point as you see there. So my opponent might play that. They might play uh, this kind of card that says every blue card there is worth one point. It itself is worth one point. Uh, perhaps with this hand, maybe I'll play here. And that would cost me two coins. I would steal any one thing I want to, put it out here in my hideout. And now because this is green, I get to pull this towards me one space, right? This continues. Again, some of them are going to give you money, give you victory points like this one. Some of them even uh, let you burn an opponent's card away. They have to get rid of a top card and put back whatever that gave them. That's pretty bad, but you know there's only three of these and you know that they're in the deck. And then we go on to add a few more thieves, more gear, more thieves, more gear, and then the game is over. And at that point then, we will score everything. Again, the locations, if this is on your side, you score that location. The thieves, if they give you points, such as this one or that one, you'll get those. And then some gear is worth points. Uh, like this one, for example, when you deploy that, you get one coin, and it itself is worth a single point, that card. Well, you'll write all that down, and whoever has the most money is, of course, the winner. Now, the thing about the cities is, these here, each one has a little bit of a different flavor. Now, they recommend you start with Paris, because there won't be any new symbols in that one. And on the back, in fact, they explain anything new involved in this. So, this one's pretty straightforward. It's basically just one point for everything you stole, above and beyond what it normally gives you, which is um, in the rule book. Let me grab the rule book here, and I'll show you what that, what that, how that scores. Actually, not the rule book, the uh, player aid. Here we go. So in the player aid, they explain to you the breakdown of the turn, and then on the back, for one thing, single thing stolen, two points, two different is five, and all three, a set of all three different ones, that's worth nine points. So there you go. These are very useful, nice hard, laminated uh, cardboard sort of feel. Um, so that's Paris, and then the other ones, each one is going to add a little something different. So they change up the flavor of the game. Rome is going to have its own thing going on. Um, London has you removing coins from the general pool and put, putting them in your hideout. So the economy of the game gets a little bit tighter with those coins. Barcelona is going to have you check the top played card on characters, and they might trigger or not trigger specific things. So these are going to change the way the game plays out. But there you go, that's generally the flow of the game. Uh, play through all six of those rounds, and you've got yourself a winner. So there you go, let's go ahead and go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of this game. All right, so let me get this out of the way right at the beginning here. Uh, I already talked about how much I like Caper. I think it's a fantastic design. Uh, having played this one now, I don't think I'm going to be going back to it. This one is an improved experience, especially when it comes to the ease of play, okay? It's just an extremely uh, streamlined package that retains the feel of the original game, the vibe, the interest, the intrigue in some ways, but makes the game have way less overhead and sort of upkeep, and just makes it a much smoother experience. Uh, unbelievably so, to the point that it's something I had not noticed in the previous game until I played this one. And now going back, I'm like, man, I gotta keep track of all these things. Now I don't, right? With this game now, I, I do not need to do that. 
So starting from the top, let's talk about the theme here. The theme is very fun. It's it's silly, it's cartoony, it's very lighthearted. I like the way the game tackles the theme and um, the different locations in which you're trying to set up these heists will be, you know, classical and, and um, the whole team and the stuff they are equipping is very irreverent. So I like the way that comes across. The aesthetics. This is a stunning production through and through. Everything is amazingly illustrated, put on some of the best card stock I've seen. Wooden tokens for the um, the the seesaw um, sort of pull of the locations, the things you are stealing, the paintings and the jewels. Everything is just wonderful. Again, I don't know a what a non-mastermind edition of this would look like, but even if they just keep the card quality, and I have to assume they keep the card quality, that's enough. It looks fantastic, and, and uh, material's excellent. Replay value. Very good. This has four cities included in it. Caperhead 3. Uh, they've been reworked a bit, so they're not really a one-to-one -one kind of uh, comparison. But it's, it's a lot of variability in setups, because you can pick those four. But also just within a play of even the same one. There's a lot of replayability, the way in which the cards are going to come out, which ones you end up drafting, where they go. And then the cities in the middle will change up the things you are attempting to, to do at each of these different heists. So replayability and replay value, fantastic. The game arc. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The game arc is great. The game arc has uh, a really interesting feeling because you are getting fewer and fewer thieves each time. Each round that it's a thief round, you get fewer. You'll draft three during the first time you get any, right? At the very beginning of the game. The next time you get some, you keep two. And then there's one final thief round in which you get one. And that's very interesting where you put out that last one. It's just like a final fortification of some place. A place that you are still fighting for. And you need a little more room for gear cards or you... you Need that one special ability on a thief to, to turn the tides, right? So I really like the way that works. The cadence in the game is fantastic. I really like it. The ease of play. Like I already said, it's much improved. I love the visual tracker of who's winning at each location. <clears throat> this was not a thing that was in the previous game, right? In the previous game, you had to keep track of the symbols you were producing on your side to see who was actually winning the location. And now you can just, every time you you gain one, be it from a thief or a gear card or whatever, you just pull that token towards your side. If you would pull it more and it's already at the edge, it's wasted. Great. And then, of course, the two or one victory point for particularly, uh, you know, winning. So I really enjoy that. I think it's fantastic. The uh, things you are stealing, having a physical representation that you take and put in your hideout, that's also different. In the previous one, they were just on the cards themselves and you just counted them at the end. So again, all these things make the ease of play just tremendous. It's so much more smooth to get into the game, to see what's going on at, at a glance, and uh, understand what's happening. And then lastly, tactics, luck, and strategy. Even though the game is simplified, and I would say this is a less heady game than the previous iteration, it doesn't feel like it's lost any of the interest. It doesn't feel like it's uh, lost the tension. Those three cards, for example, that, that burn something, those bright red cards, there's three in the deck. You know they're in there. You have to manage, knowing that, you have to manage then what is on top of a thief. Those cards can only eliminate the last played gear card on one of the thieves. So if there's something you particularly want to protect, you want to bury that quickly. You want to play one thing and then try to, as quickly as you can, play another one on top so that you protect the one below it. And that's very interesting. It leads to a lot of, uh, you know, kind of risk-taking, a lot of jockeying for position. But besides that, managing the money in the game is very interesting. Every time you would make a coin, there's only 10 in the pool, these wonderful metal coins here. There are only 10 in the game, and every time you would make one, if there are none in the pool, you can take it from your opponent as long as they still have more coins than you do. 
So it's another reason for you to make money, certainly, but spend it as well. If you hoard money, you are going to just end up having your opponent pilfer your coins from you. That's another point of interest, you know, using your money, knowing um, how to manage it. And uh, another thing you can do, which I didn't talk about in the overview, is when you have your gear cards, when you have your, your hand of six gear cards at the beginning of each of those rounds, you can play one, as I already explained. Some are free, even. Some have a cost. But you can also just discard one for one coin. If you simply have a hand that cannot be played, nothing can be played, or you're just not interested in playing one of those. You want to save your money or you want to make some money, then you can just discard one of those and take one coin from the supply. So that's another interesting move. You're wasting being able to play a card. You, you might have to. But you get a coin and you can prepare. Maybe you just didn't have enough money from just the, the money the, the thieves gave you. So all of these little decisions, all these sort of input, you know, um, sort of in input locations or, or, you know, thought processes that you have to go through add up to something that is certainly streamlined, certainly easy to comprehend and play and put into effect a plan. But the interest stays very, very high. And the game's not very long. The game's a fairly quick and short game. So for me, Caper was a 9 out of 10. It's a game that I think, again, is fantastic. Caper Europe here, 10 out of 10. I think it's just tremendous. Absolutely a seal of excellence. I would certainly recommend it to anyone, anyone who likes uh, two-player tug-of-war style games, if you appreciate the look of this, if you like the theme, if you just want something that is very easy to play but has a, a nice amount of depth and strategy and sort of, again, head-to-head -head, uh, mischief. So there you go. Caper Europe. 10 out of 10, everybody. My name is Z Garcia. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Yeah.